Well, now that we've learned a little bit about how life is built up from the atoms upward, and we've discussed some of the basics of energy, thermodynamics, and how things move forward, or how we can tell whether they're going to move forward or not, we can look now at some of the energy processes of the cell. And the big one is photosynthesis, because without the sun, we wouldn't have life the way we have it here on Earth. Uh, sun's energy gets converted into life energy inside of plants and things that have the tools to harness that energy. Uh, we harness energy from the sun using our silicon type uh, solar cells and uh, some other tricky ways of taking the sun and turning it into useful human energy. The way that life does it is with complex organic molecules. Chlorophyll, for example, is a massive organic ring that can turn sun into electricity. And other molecules in other types of organisms, for example, in their, these little bacteria that are very highly colored, there's something called bacteria rhodopsin. Those uh, complicated organics can convert sunlight into mechanical energy. But uh, the one that we're going to be talking about today is, is what chlorophyll does, which is to take sun's energy and turning it into electricity. The conversion of this process is very low. Um, you know, we're talking, you know, down and below, you know, 10%, below 5%, way, way down. Uh, but it turns out that it's plenty of power to power all of life on this planet because the sun is putting in so much power. So you only have to take a small fraction of that to keep life going. The end result of all of the conversions that happen inside of plants is to take that electricity that uh, chlorophyll harnesses from sunlight and uh, turn it into a CO2 to sugar conversion inside of an organelle called the chloroplast. So CO2 is present in the atmosphere, and the CO2 can come in through the leaves of a plant, in through the, the membrane of small algae and other uh, smaller organisms that have chlorophyll, and enter, and as they involve themselves in the photosynthetic pathway, they turn that CO2, the carbon in carbon dioxide, gets turned into sugars, which also have carbon in them. Um, now, if an organism can't do this conversion of CO2 into some sugar, it must eat other organisms. Uh, those organisms might themselves be plants, or they might themselves have to eat other organisms, which are those. eventually down the line you go, down the food chain, until finally they're eating something that can take energy from the sun. Um, plants don't need to eat other organisms because they're at the bottom of this food chain. When they um, need other organisms, it's because they need their other atomic building blocks, such as the phosphorus or the, the uh, phosphorus, the, there's uh, potassium. Venus flytraps, for example, look like they're eating other organisms, insects that fly into their mouth. But what they're really doing is they're getting the building blocks, not so much the energy from those organisms. What about life without the sun? Can life with, exist at all without sun's energy? Well, for a long time, we humans didn't know if this would be possible. Uh, but it turns out that deep, deep down in the ocean, where there are these thermal vents releasing rich chemicals that have high energy based on the thermal activity of the earth, uh, those organisms are very much surviving without any sun or without any animals that have trapped sun's energy and then have died and sunk down to the bottom of the ocean. Okay, so that is an example of a sunless ecosystem. Could this form of life exist on one of Jupiter's moons, something that has maybe some liquid water on it? Why or why not? Um, this is a, a great question for you to think about and a good little mental activity for you to think about whether we might discover someday life on one of Jupiter's moons. Now, uh, a little story that I like to think about in this case is something that, again, my scientific hero from childhood, Carl Sagan, mentioned in his 1980 Cosmos series. He speculated on forms of life on Jupiter itself. Uh, where Jupiter does not have liquid water, it has 
organic molecules that he said were falling from the skies like manna from heaven. So he envisioned something that didn't involve water but involved those rich organic molecules instead. Instead, He talked about floaters, animals that could float in the atmosphere, and sinkers, animals that just slowly sunk down and then I guess shot their spores up higher and their next generation sunk down. Uh, and those would uh, harvest these rich organic molecules to make more uh, organisms. And then he talked about the hunters that would feed off of the floaters and the sinkers. This obviously was very intriguing to me when I was a young person. Um, and in countless sci-fi stories, you, you see this idea of life forms that can exist on alternate forms of energy, uh, life forms that might not even need any liquid water. Will we ever discover something like that? We don't know, but this discovery of the ecosystems down in the thermal vents deep underwater was definitely an indication that new forms of life are possible. If you're looking at your textbook, uh, the bio book, this would be a good time to read the branch, How Do Plants Convert Solar Energy into Chemical Energy? And you should start by learning the four-step process of sun to chemical energy conversion and then tackle the rest of the leaves. 